One, I've always wanted to know what's the real reality, what's underlying everything, what's, what's mm -hmm. the ultimate. And when we use the word fundamental, we always talk about physics. Why is that the case? Why do we call physics fundamental? Right, this has to do with the structure of laws in, our, in reality. So in a few hundred years ago, people started studying the laws of chemistry. Mm -hmm. and, well, they were, they were chemists and they studied <laughs> how chemical reactions occurred and so on. And there were other people who were studying dynamics of particles, pendula, pendula and yeah. so on. And well, um, eventually people tried to understand uh, how smaller and smaller particles behave. Um, and it turned out to be the case that uh, the laws of chemistry uh, can be, in principle, derived from the laws of, uh, of atoms, how par electrons move uh, around the atoms, or around the different atomic nuclei. Um, so in this sense, uh, you can view as chemistry as uh, derived from physics. Of course, this deri derivation is, in a way, some uh, one conceptual way to think about it. Of course, many times to, to learn about uh, some specific chemical substance is simpler to do some experiment and calculate it right, right. directly from the um, laws of, the, of quantum mechanics that describe the motion of the electrons around the atom. Uh, so that's usually very complicated. Mm -hmm. So in, in practice, the uh, chemistry, of course, continues to be a very interesting yeah, science yeah, and, right, uh, right. and should, should be studied and so on and can have lots of practical applications yeah. uh, as, as it does. Yeah. Um, um, on the other hand, if you view it from a logical point of view, uh, the, these laws uh, can be, in principle, derived from these other more fundamental laws. And so they are fundamental in this sense that uh, out of these more microscopic laws, you describe more macroscopic laws, more laws that are, occur for bigger objects. So what you're saying is that on each level, uh, right. they, they are self-consistent, they can be worked on its own level without really understanding too much of the lower level, so they can be worked in their own the chemistry or right. biology right. or whatever. Right. But, but in principle, right. the, those laws are derived from some complex uh, uh, characteristics of the underlying law. That's right. why it's right. more fundamental. Yeah, and usually the underlying law is simpler than, yeah. in some way, when looked at the right, in the right way, is simpler than the other law. Uh -huh. I mean, the laws of chemistry are complicated because for each chemical substance you have different parameters and so on. But they all come from the interactions of protons and uh, electrons. Yeah, yeah. And so in that sense, it's a simpler law. So as, you, as you go more fundamental, as you go right, deeper right, down, right. the laws become simpler right. in one this, sense. This has been the experience so far. Uh -huh. So, uh, so, so how, let, let, let's trace down how we've gone. We, now we talked about chemistry, and then we right. go down to the next level. People yeah, yeah, the next level is the level of atoms. Right. You still need all the atomic nuclei. Right. So at this level, somebody is telling you, well, you have, uh, I don't know, 92 or so right. atomic nuclei, and they differ in, their, uh, in the charge they have. And according to that charge, you have a different number of right. electrons. And then in that way, uh, you have all the different chemical substances and so on. Right, right. But then you ask, well, what are these atoms made of? Right. Um, and then, uh, well, we have electrons and nuclei. And the nuclei are made of also some other particles, protons and neutrons. And how do they interact? Um, well, they interact according to some even more fundamental law, which is the law of quantum chromodynamics, which says that these particles are made of smaller particles, <laughs> uh, which are called quarks and gluons. Um, and that's what we, where we currently stop now. So we have quarks and gluons, and they give rise to all the all the various uh, atomic nuclei. Yeah, the, the, and the, the quarks uh, being right. the, the... The constituents of and the... And the gluon protons. being the, the, the... The gluons are the force... Uh, that's exchanged that between is exchanged. Them. Yeah, it's exactly. It's like the photon. And it's electron. like the photon, exactly. Right, right. Yeah. So, you, so have, you, have, you have the mm -hmm. substance, and then you have the force between them. Right, right. And those are the two elements. And, right. And that's where we are. Yeah, that's, that's where we are now, yeah. essentially. But, um, that, but we're not going to stop there. Yeah, we're not going to stop there. Uh, we like to find even uh, more fundamental laws right. which explain where the quarks and gluons and the electrons come <laughs> from. Uh, okay. That's where we would like to go. And actually, there is now the experiment of the Large Hadron Collider that um, is, uh, is going to explore the, the nature of interactions at even shorter distances. Mm. 
and hopefully tell us uh, something new about uh, the, the particles, these fundamental particles or build building blocks of nature. So if right now we're at the stage of the, the gluons and right. the quarks that make up the neutrons right. and, and yeah. protons yeah. In, yeah. in the nucleus and, uh, and, the, and then we have the electron. Exactly. And that's the fundamental part of it. Right. Right. Uh, what type of work do we have to, to, to go more fundamental in terms of string theory, for example, that you work on? Mm, right. So string theory tries to put together these particles with uh, gravity. So uh, with the force of gravity. So these particles we have just been talking about uh, describe the electric force and the strong force, which are important for matter. Right. And gravity describes uh, an extra force. Um, and one would like to put these two theories together. And that's what string theory uh, does. Now, if you're able to do that and, and these strings mm -hmm. become the more fundamental matter, so then, then each of these other kinds of particles, uh, uh, the quarks, the gluons, the electrons, and right. then the, yeah. are, would, be, would be made up of, of the strings. Exactly, yeah. How, how yeah. would that work? Yeah, one, one pattern that has emerged uh, in the last uh, few hundred years uh, is that complex objects are made of simpler entities. Okay. And that the laws of physics become simpler when you think about these more fundamental laws. So all the complex chemical substances are made just of 92 atoms. Right. And then all these various uh, atoms depend on the nuclei and just protons and neutrons, which in turn are made of quarks and right. gluons. And the laws that govern quarks and gluons are very simple. Yeah. Um, the laws of nuclear physics are rather complicated. So neutrons and protons interact in a complicated ways because they are made of many, uh, of a large number of particles right. and so on. However, the laws of quantum chromodynamics is, are, are much simpler. So how then do now, you get yeah, so the idea, the idea is that, yeah, so strings um, would give you a unified picture for all particles. So all particles uh, would be the same string, but oscillating in different ways. So out of the same entity, you would produce the various particles, the electron, the quarks, the gluons, the graviton, so the quantum of gravitation. So all these force. different things are produced by one thing. Yeah, that's right. That's but just the, acting in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And, and the, this acting is a vibration? Yeah, in this case, it's a vibration, or it could also be the same string moving in different extra dimensions, uh -huh. and uh, so on. So uh, that's uh, the picture you get from string theory. So, so in essence, we're saying that uh, that there's uh, almost an infinite number of things in the world and they're mm -hmm. composed of chemicals, maybe there's millions yeah. or hundreds of millions yeah. of chemicals and, yeah. they're, and they're of 92 mm -hmm. normal mm -hmm. elements of, right. Uh, right. of atoms and then there's a few mm -hmm. neutrons, protons, and right. electrons. Right. And now you're saying at the ultimate level it may be that there's one thing, right. which is a string, right. Right. which is vibrating in different ways. Yeah, that's right. So this is the general idea, general theme of unification, the idea that uh, forces and things that appear to be different uh, have an underlying common origin. Uh -huh. And it's not just of, for mathematical beauty or for beauty. That it, it's only very beautiful that they can be unified as in a more uh, fundamental way, but also makes the theory more calculable and simpler. Uh -huh. and, and, and the range of phenomena that you can describe becomes wider once you have this more unified description. I, I mean it it's, it's fascinating to hear the detail, but when you step back from it, it is absolutely awesome that everything we see, all the complexity mm -hmm. that we see could be the result of one thing, right. uh, th these microscopic strings right. vibrating in different ways. Yeah, no, I think that this is amazing. It's what's beautiful about this theory. Of course, it would, for the moment, it's just a theory, but <laughs> we would like to see how to test it. And okay. We'd like to understand this theory better.